हरी कृष्णा आप सभी लोगों का स्वागत है आज की इस वीडियो में मोस्ट वेलकम हरी कृष्णा जैसे कि आज का टाइटल है भागवतम का मैं आपको पढ़ के बताऊंगा जीवास फॉल डाउन अंडरस्टैंडिंग जीवास फॉल डाउन इन मटेरियल वर्ल्ड और एंट्री ऑफ जीव इन द मटेरियल वर्ल्ड अंडरस्टैंडिंग हाउ जीवा entered in the material world जैसे कि कुछ लोगों ने मुझको कहा व्यूवर्स ने फ्रेंड्स ने भी बड़ा ये डांटता है कुछ कुछ वीडियो में तो मैं आपको हंसाऊंगा भी ऐसी बात नहीं है हंसाऊंगा भी और कभी कभी डांटना भी पड़ता है क्या करें क्योंकि एक बात ये भी है कि यहाँ पर जितने भी प्रभु लोग आ रहे हैं उनको रिलीफ चाहिए मटेरियल वर्ल्ड में कहीं भी रिलीफ नहीं है और ठीक है हंसाएंगे भी उनको बट कभी कभी डांटना भी पड़ता है जैसे ये एक गुरुदेव थे किस्सा था भी गुरु बोले भी वो उसको बोले भी मेरे को तो बहुत प्यार करते हैं हाय हेलो करते हैं भी कैसे हो तो उस तरह है भी वो जब कहते हैं भी आए ठीक हो हेलो और सब कुछ ठीक चल रहा है कोई सेहतें ठीक है बीमार तो नहीं हो और खा लो पी लो ये कर लो वो कर लो और अंदर से वो सोच रहे हैं भी ये जल्दी मुझसे कट जाए बट जिसको डांटते हैं उसको अपना समझते हैं उसको दिखाते हैं भी लाठी दिखाते हैं भी रस्ते पे आ जाए क्योंकि वो उसको अपना समझते हैं थोड़ा डांटेंगे फटकारेंगे तो उसको बुरा लग सकता है बट हो सकता है वो रस्ते पे आ जाए आज नहीं तो कल उसको आना ही पड़ेगा क्योंकि मटेरियल वर्ल्ड में कहीं भी उसको रिलीफ नहीं मिलेगा स्पिरिचुअल वर्ल्ड में ही उसको रिलीफ मिलेगा तो जितना जल्दी वो आ जाए प्यार से मार से तो उसके लिए उतना ही अच्छा रहेगा चलिए मैं थोड़ी आरती करता हूँ उसके बाद मैं आपको पढ़ के बताऊँगा आज का सत्संग शुरू करते हैं जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जगोपि जन बल्लभ गिरिबर धारी यशोदानंदन ब्रिज जन रंजन यशोदानंदन ब्रिज जन रंजन यमुना तीर बन चारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी गोपी जन बल्लभ गिरिबर धारी यशोदानंदन ब्रिज जन रंजन यशोदानंदन ब्रिज जन रंजन यमुना तीर बन चारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे हरे जय राधा माधव राधा माधव राधे जय राधा माधव राधा माधव राधे जय राधा श्याम सुंदर राधा श्याम सुंदर राधे जय राधा श्याम सुंदर राधा श्याम सुंदर राधे जय कृष्ण बल राम कृष्ण बल राम कृष्ण बल राम जय जय कृष्ण बल राम जय कृष्ण बल राम कृष्ण बल राम कृष्ण बल राम जय जय कृष्ण बल राम 
जय गौरानिताय नित्याय गौरंगा गौरंगा निताय जय नित्याय गौरंगा जय कृष्ण बलराम कृष्ण बलराम कृष्ण बलराम जय जय कृष्ण बलराम जय गौरानिताय 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 श्री श्री गौरानिताय जय जय प्रभुपाद 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 जय जय शीला प्रभुपाद जय जय गुरुदेव 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 जय जय गुरुदेव वेदांत स्वामी शील प्रभुपाद की जय जय हम विष्णुपाद परम हंस परिवराज के चारे श्लोक श्री श्रीमद कृष्ण कृपा मूर्ति अभय चरणारविंद भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी श्री लोपाद की जय इस्कॉन बीबीटी संस्था उपकाचार्य स्वामी श्री लोपाद की जय नामचार्य शील हरिदास ठाकुर की जय अनंत कोटि वैष्णव वृंद की जय प्रेम से कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री द्वैत कदा श्री वसि कौर भक्त वृंद की जय जय ओम विष्णु पाद परम हंस परिवराज कचार्य श्लोक श्री श्रीमद कृष्ण कृपा श्री मूर्ति भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती ठाकुर श्री लोपाद की जय श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गोप गोपिका शाम कुंड राधा कुंड गिरी गोवर्धन की जय श्री 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 पुरुषोत्तम क्षेत्र जगन्नाथपुरी धाम की जय श्री नवदीप मायापुर धाम की जय श्री यमुना माई की जय श्री गंगा देवी की जय श्री तुलसी माई की जय श्री भक्ति देवी की जय गौर प्रेमानंदी हरि हरि बोल हरि नाम संकीर्तन की जय आप सभी भक्तों की जय ऑल ग्लोरीज टू श्री प्रोपाद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे मैं आपको थोड़ा सा भागवतम से पढ़ के बताऊंगा जैसे कि आप जानते हैं कभी मैं इंग्लिश कभी हिंदी मिक्स बताता हूँ कभी आज जैसे आज थोड़ा इंग्लिश में होगा लेक्चर और शायद एंड में एक थोड़ा सा गीत भी सुनाऊंगा वो हिंदी में होगा तो मैं आपको पढ़ के बताता हूँ थोड़ा तो आज हम पढ़ेंगे वी विल रीड फ्रॉम द सेकंड कैंटो ऑफ श्रीमद भागवतम फिफ्थ चैप्टर एंड पच्चीस नंबर श्लोक तो इसमें क्या बता रहे हैं इसको पढ़ने से पहले मैं एक प्रेयर जो कि भागवतम की है वो कर देता हूँ नष्ट प्रायशु भद्रेशु नष्ट प्रायशु भद्रेशु नित्यम भागवत से व्या नित्यम भागवत से व्या भगवती उत्तम श्लोके भगवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्ति भगवती नष्ट की भक्ति भगवती नष्ट की इसका वैसे ट्रांसलेशन इस प्रेयर का बता देता हूँ आपको भागवतम का मतलब इस दिस ट्रांसलेशन एंड प्रपर्ट बाय श्री रूपा श्री रूपा की जय इसका सिर्फ ट्रांसलेशन बताता हूँ थोड़ा सा उसके बाद हम जो कि सेकंड कैंटो का पांचवा श्लोक और पच्चीसवा पांचवा चैप्टर और पच्चीसवा श्लोक के बारे में बताएंगे translation this means that by regular attendance in classes of the bhagavatam on the bhagavatam and by rendering of service to the pure devotee all that is troublesome to the heart is almost completely destroyed and loving service on to the personality of godhead who is praised with the transcendental songs is established as an irrevocable fact हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे तो आज का हम श्लोक शुरू करते हैं सेकंड कैंटो फिफ्थ चैप्टर पच्चीसवा श्लोक 
तम सात अपि भूता दे तम सात अपि भूता दे विकुर्वनात नाभ तस्य विकुर्वात नाभ तस् अभूत विकुर्वा विकर्वनात अभूत नाभ विकर्वनात अभूत नाभ तस्या मात्र गुना शब्द तस्या मात्र गुना शब्द लिंगम यत दृष्टर दृश्यो लिंगम यत दृष्टर दृश्यो तस्मात अपि भूता दे विकुर्वानात अभूत नाभ विकुर्वनात अभूत नाभ तस्या मात्र गुना शब्द तस्या मात्र गुना शब्द लिंगम यत दृष्टर दृश्य तो ट्रांसलेशन एंड परपट बाय शील प्रपा शील प्रपाद की जय इन दिस ट्रांसलेशन दे आर सेइंग दैट फर्स्ट आई विल टेल यू द सिनोनिम्स तमासात मींस फ्रॉम द डार्कनेस ऑफ फॉल्स ईगो एंड अपि मींस सर्टेनली भूता दे मींस ऑफ द मटेरियल एलिमेंट्स विकुरवनात मींस बिकॉज़ ऑफ ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन अभूत मींस जनरेटेड नाभा मींस द स्काई तस्या मींस इट्स मात्रा मींस सप्तल फॉर्म गुना मींस क्वालिटी शब्द मींस साउंड लिंगम कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स यत एज इट्स दृष्टर द सीर दृश्यो ऑफ व्हाट इन सीन तो ट्रांसलेशन एंड परपट बाय शील प्रपाद शील प्रपाद की जय फ्रॉम द डार्कनेस ऑफ फॉल्स ईगो द फर्स्ट ऑफ द फाइव एलिमेंट्स फ्रॉम द डार्कनेस ऑफ फॉल्स ईगो From the darkness of false ego. One second. From the darkness of false ego, the first of five elements, namely the sky, is generated. Its subtle form is the quality of sound, exactly as the seer is in relationship with the seer. तो इसके परपट में बताते हैं द फाइव एलिमेंट्स नेमली स्काई एयर फायर वाटर एंड अर्थ आर ऑल बट डिफरेंट क्वालिटीज ऑफ द डार्कनेस ऑफ फॉल्स ईगो तो फाइव एलिमेंट नेमली स्काई एयर फायर वाटर एंड अर्थ आर ऑल बट डिफरेंट क्वालिटीज ऑफ द डार्कनेस ऑफ फॉल्स ईगो दिस मींस दैट द फॉल्स ईगो इन द सम टोटल फॉर्म ऑफ महत तत्व इज जनरेटेड फ्रॉम द मार्जिनल पोटेंसी ऑफ द लॉर्ड एंड ड्यू टू दिस फॉल्स ईगो ऑफ लॉर्डिंग इट ओवर द मटेरियल क्रिएशन इंग्रेडिएंट्स आर जनरेटेड for the false enjoyment of the living being the living being is practically the dominating factor over the material elements as the enjoyer through the background is the supreme lord factually save and accept the lord no one can be called the enjoyer but the living entity falsely desires to become the enjoyer so this is the origin of false ego when the bewildered living being desires this the shadow elements are generated by the will of the lord and the living entities are allowed to run after them as after a phantasmagoria it is said that first the tan matra sound is created and then the sky and in this verse it is confirmed that actually it is so but sound is the subtle form of the sky 
and the distinction is like that between the seer and the seen. The sound is the representation of the actual object as the sound produced speaking of the object gives an idea of the description of the object. Therefore, sound is the subtle characteristic of the object. Similarly, sound representation of the Lord as was seen by Vasudeva and Maharaj Dashrath, the fathers of Lord Krishna and Lord Ram. The sound representation of the Lord is non different from the Lord Himself because the Lord and His representation in sound are absolute knowledge. Lord Chaitanya has instructed us that in the holy name of the Lord, as sound representation of the Lord, all the potencies of the Lord are invested. Thus, one can immediately enjoy the association of the Lord by the pure vibration of the sound representation of His holy name. And the concept of the Lord is immediately manifested before the pure devotee. A pure devotee, therefore, is not aloof from the Lord even for a moment. The holy name of the Lord as recommended in the Shastras, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare, may therefore be constantly chanted by the devotee, aspiring to be constantly in touch with the Supreme Lord. One who is thus able to associate with the Lord is sure to be delivered from the darkness of the created world which is a product of false ego. Tamsi ma jyotir gam. So, I just read this translation and purport Prabhuji. I will try my best to explain this one. So, this me bataya gaya hai, jaysay ki Shilpa Pad ki jay. So there are five elements which are namely sky, air, water, fire, earth and then the sum total form of Mahatattva is generated from the marginal potency of the Lord and due to this false ego of lingering, lording it over or lingering it over the material creation, ingredients are generated for the false enjoyment of the living being. The living being want to enjoy it, which is falsely created by him because of this Mahatattva, which is generated by these five contents, five elements, which are sky, air, water, fire, earth. Okay. So, the living being is practically the dominating factor over the material elements as the enjoyer. Even though the background is the Supreme Lord, actually save and expect the Lord, no one can be called the enjoyer. But the living entity falsely desires to become the enjoyer. So, this is the origin of false ego. When the bewildered living being desires this, the shadow elements are generated by the will of the Lord. And the living entities are allowed to run after them as after a phantasmagoria. So the current discussion in the fifth chapter of the second canto, this is a conversation between Brahma and Narad Muni, where Narad Muni requested Brahma to speak about one of the question was that how this universal creation happens. And he is currently discussing about the <coughs> false ego in the mode of in ignorance. Tamas Ankar, how these various elements and their tan matras and their tan matras are gand shabd, how they are manifesting sequentially from the subtlest to the grossest. 
शब्द साउंड फ्रॉम साउंड एंड देन गंध फ्रॉम एयर है ना तो दीज आर दन मात्रा विच आर मैनिफेस्टिंग सिक्वेंशली फ्रॉम द सफ्टलेस टू द ग्रोसेस्ट दैट इज द डिस्कशन दैट इज हैपनिंग राइट नाउ सो दिस इज द फर्स्ट वर्ड विच डिस्क्राइब मैनिफेस्टेशन फ्रॉम द तमस अहंकार how first shabd is created from the shabd ether and then in the subsequent verses we will see that how from ether you know the sense of touch is created from the sense of touch air is created from air then form then from form fire like that you now know that whole creation will be described and subsequently how these elements combine together to form a fully functional universe will be described later so today we will just try to discuss of course it's a very profound purport and many different themes we could take from this particular purport but we will just take one small portion of shil prabhupas purport today and try to see what we can discuss from that shil prapad in his purport writes the five elements namely sky air water fire and uh, these are all but different qualities of the darkness of false ego in some total form of mahat tatva from which the sum total of mahat tatva is generated from the marginal potency of the lord and due to this false ego of lingering it over material creation ingredients are generated for the false enjoyment of the living being the living being is practically the dominating factor over the material elements as the enjoyer through the background is the supreme lord so in the background is the supreme lord but we falsely want to enjoy because of the mahat tatva which is the marginal potency of the lord and then the living entities are allowed to run after them as phantasmagoria so once once one of shil prapad disciples he asked shil prapad why why did he want it he wanted to ask that uh, shil prapad disciple asked that why did the supreme lord create this material universe because we, of which we are suffering normally sab logo ka question yahi rehta hai to jaise ek disciple thi prapad ki usne pucha bhi kaise ye why did the supreme lord created this material universe why we are suffering here because of which we are suffering because of this material universe then uh, uh, prabhupad said why did uh, <coughs> the supreme lord create this material universe before he even asked the next part the disciple then uh, before that shil prabhupad said that the lord did not create you create so which means it was created for you because you wanted to enjoy separately from krishna so the point that prabhupad writes here is when the bewildered living being desires this to be the enjoyer then the shadow elements are generated by the will of the lord and the living entities are allowed to run after them after a phantasmagoria so now the question is when and why the living entity got bewildered this question this is a million dollar question <laughs> why living entity fall into this material world so this question naturally arises so this theme of the living entity getting bewildered is described in this very beautiful verse of line 11th canto in 11th canto of bhagavatam this verse has been described of the nav yogendra to nimi maharaj very sequentially and beautifully this themes comes out famous from a famous verse often times this question or this verse so this verse says what happens first he says is the living entity 
the living entity he turns his face away from krishna who is ours to the lord who is our lord then what happens maya catches hold of him and then how does she induce him two things okay <coughs> means krishna bhuliya sahi ji bhagwan cha kare निकटस्थर माया जापोटिया निकटस्थर माया कृष्ण भूलिया जी भगवान छा करे पाछे ताई माया जापोटिया निकट माया जापोटिया धरे पीछे से माया पकड़ लेती है कृष्ण को भूल गया है जी देन हाउ डज शी इन यूज हिम टू थिंग्स ओके मींस विया और अस्ति मींस मेकिंग हिम फॉरगेट व्हाट ही इज रियली बाय द बाय द आत्म एंड विया मींस मेकिंग हिम आइडेंटिफाई विद द बॉडी थ्रू द आत्मिक फॉर्म एंड बिकॉज़ ऑफ दिस व्हाट हैपेंस अभिन अभिन मींस एब्जॉर्प्शन means that which is not the self which is the body and because of this abhin comes <coughs> the fear of sansara okay so and this verse does not just say how this whole bondage of the jeev happens but it also says jeev means living entity or in hindi we say jeev so jeev happens but it is also how can we escape this bondage like buddha the intelligent person gurudat atma who accept the guru as his worshipable lord and his very self and by such acceptance is and when he worships the supreme lord with unaided devotion that is then when he can escape the means of escaping is how so the whole thing started with the jeev becoming ours to the lord so the ultimate solution is when the jeev becomes favorably disposed towards the lord and that favorable disposition disposition towards the lord can only come through the agency of the guru right that's was this is the verse that they are talking about so this verse what's this verse talks about understanding this role of maya the second clo of shrimad bhagavatam describe the nature of maya or the role of maya so the lord says that how do we understand how the maya function he says maya has three parts pradhan vidya and avidya okay so what does pradhan pradhan creates all the elements that are needed for manifesting the subtle body and gross body or this material universe with all its subtle and gross elements okay and the avidya potency makes the jeev identify with that body why because he wants to enjoy separately from krishna but constitutionally it is not possible because this is constitutionally a part and parcel of krishna so he cannot he can only imagine to be separate from krishna that imagination is created by the avidya and that whatever he can imaginarily identify with that is the gross body and subtle body that is created by pradhan but when the jeev realizes or understand that no no actually i cannot be happy in this material world i wish to go back i wish to go back then the vidya potency acts on him and helps him go back so all these three are within the realm of mahamaya so there are two, two things mahamaya and yogamaya but the vidya potency acts on the jeev and helps him go back so all these three are within the realm of mahamaya only pradhan 
avidya and vidya so he says the avidya potency has two roles anam and aram means what real that which is real means through sorry the self is jeev the jeev right we are not this body we are the soul so the avidya potency covers that what is real one is unable to see just like in darkness in darkness real things cannot be seen and there is a fear fear of false things that may be there okay like you may see a rope and think that it is a snake but because there is no light there is no way you can verify it you cannot touch and see i will verify whether it is rope or snake <coughs> <coughs> you know it might be a costly examination in fact it can be your last examination if in darkness you cannot see some things like a snake and you go and touch it it may be not your a costly examination it will may be your final examination it may become the final examination in this body so when darkness is there real objects or cannot be seen and there is a fear of false objects so that is a vidya so vidya has these two potencies prakashi and <coughs> arika arikashi the aran atmik shi covers the real avaran atmika shakti so pratmika shakti and avarat avaran avara avara avar, atmika shakti the avara atmika shakti covers the real thing the real thing is the soul the atmik shakti does not allow the avara avar our an atmika shakti does not allow the person to identify with the soul and there is fear of false identification <clears throat> with false things the body is not real but when the jeev becomes or understand that this world is not a fit place for me to live i should leave this world then the vidya potency acts on him the vidya potency guides him how when you switch on the light that which is there you see there is a pot in the room there is a pillar in the room everything you can see and you can clearly see there is no snake or a scorpion whatever it is right so that is the role of vidya potency so which means when a person is ready for liberation the vidya potency guides him to identify with the soul and not identify it with the body not identify with the body but even this is within the realm of mahamaya only because by this kind of role vidya one can only come till the stage of self realization ultimately by taking up to the practice of bhakti pure bhakti only then one can reach the stage of parmatma and completely reach the stage of self realization okay so in this material world there are three categories of people okay materialists sadhaka and perfect devotees of course the second and third categories are very rare which ones i'm talking about i'm talking about uh, sadhakas and perfected devotees so second and third categories are very rare the third category is extremely rare which one perfected devotees so for the materialist the role of maya is life or chastening like situ life situations for the jeev okay so that so whether it is yog maya or maha maya yog maya acts on perfected devotees maha maya acts in the material world okay so for the materialist ordinary materialist of this material world the life situations are orchestrated by maha maya 
बट ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ वंस कर्मा ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ वंस कर्मा महामाया पुट्स द लिविंग एंटिटीज इन पर्टिकुलर सिचुएशंस एंड दे रिस्पॉन्ड टू दो सिचुएशंस बेस्ड ऑन द स्वभाव दैट दे हैव एक्यूमुलेटेड so they are put in a particular situation like for example if mahamaya puts them in a situation let's say there is a buffet okay there is a buffet like this morning i was uh, eating prashadam breakfast okay and uh, there were four items pongal ki pongal then coconut chutney and uh, masala bhat and the devotee sitting next to me he was uh, doing exactly you know opposite so the choice is there based on one's past experience you know when when mahamaya puts us in a particular situation our response is according to the vasanas that we have accumulated this is for materialist materialists the materialist mahamaya puts them in situation according to their karma and the response of the jeev is according to his vasanas but for the sadhakas okay for the perfected devotees in spiritual world and in the material world yog maya puts them in a particular situations under the guidance of krishna okay and their response to that situation is according to the spiritual vasanas that they have accumulated like for example mother yashoda krishna opened the mouth and there was universal form there was universal form seen so yog maya also covers and shows first universal form it saw the universal form she saw the universal form for a moment she got bewildered but then again universal form not the universal form was removed by the yog maya okay and after that she considered various reasons and uh, finally she said none of these reason is true krishna is totally dependent on me and i need to protect krishna that is the ultimate reality so her response whose response yashoda maya's response to krishna was that krishna is totally dependent on me and i need to protect krishna that is the ultimate reality so her response was according to the parmatma which was there within her heart right so the role of yogmaya and mahamaya is to put the living entities in particular life situations and the response is according to their qualification their vasanas but when it comes to the sadhakas in this material world like all of us who are practicing pure devotional service the life situation is orchestrated by which mahamaya or yogmaya can you tell me mahamaya or yogmaya actually mahamaya okay i don't want to take a poll because then by then the class will be over so the life situations of sadhakas are orchestrated by mahamaya but under the guidance of krishna not under the guidance of karma because yog maya acts only on perfected devotees who are ready to participate in the past times of krishna okay so mahamaya acts in conditioned souls whether they are conditioned materialist or conditioned sadhakas but in conditioned sadhakas mahamaya acts under the instruction of krishna and not under <coughs> according to one's karma so therefore the life situations presented for a devotee in the form of suffering happiness etc are not according to karma but according to krishna okay anyway so therefore now what about the jeev the living entities in brahm jyoti okay then in brahm jyoti because for action you need two things right action and uh, like action and reaction action need an external trigger and you need an internal disposition 
to respond to that trigger like for example if i have to do the action of eating okay so when i go to the kitchen there should be an external trigger in the form of one bucket with you know pongal one bucket with chutney and whatever right i need to have an internal disposition of experience i always liked pongal so chutney like that so then there is an action of taking that pongal in the plate and eating it right so for any action there should be an external trigger and there should be an eternal disposition to respond to the trigger in the material world the living entity that external trigger is created by mahamaya and they all have material vasanas based on which they respond in the spiritual world yog maya or yog maya or castrates the external situation and the response is according to their particular flavor of per flavor of parvatma which is there in their heart okay so now the jeev in brahm jyoti they are under which mahamaya or yogmaya actually none they are neither under yogmaya nor under mahamaya there is a no nothing there is no used for external trigger because there is no internal vasanas because all the material vasanas have been purified and no spiritual vasanas have been dwelt because they are not practicing bhakti so because there is no internal material vasanas or spiritual vasanas therefore there is no need for external trigger it will not generate action therefore the living entities are inactive in brahm jyoti so now one may say how can the living entity ever be inactive because open times we hear the real nature of the living entity is to be active right how many of you have heard shil prabhupad mention that this living entity can never be inactive it is always active that is his nature right so but if you see and does anyone remember which verse shil prapat quotes to substantiate this point verse number 3 shlok 5 okay this is the verse that prapat quotes but if you see what that verse actually indicates it indicates that conditioned souls cannot remain inactive even for a moment why karma they will be helplessly pushed to perform actions by what by the by the gestures of prakriti in the form of vasanas which is there within their heart that will push them to act so that verse does not talk about the constitutional nature of the soul to be active that verse indicates why conditioned souls cannot be inactive because their conditioning will not allow them to be inactive so it is the constitutional nature of the soul to be always active yes but for that action to happen it is the potential or the potential activity of the jeev or jeev has the potential to act for that jeev need to realize the potential it needs internal triggers and external triggers internal triggers in the form of vasanas either material or spiritual and external triggers in the form of yog maya and ma maya so for a jeev or living entity in brahm jyoti there is neither the internal trigger nor material vasanas and no parmatma therefore there is no need for external triggers mahamaya or yogmaya so they remain inactive there okay so anyways talking about this whole concept you know the fear of sansara for the jeev in this material world is due to 
the obtained bodily identification bodily absorption and that bodily absorption is created due to via and st due to identification with the body and inability to understand that we are not this body we are the soul and this is created by maya and why maya catches the jeev is because he has turned his face away from krishna so the question million dollar question is when the jeev turns away and why the million dollar question is why the jeev falls down right why this is the question here and when this is the question that naturally comes Srila Prabhupada's answer to these questions are very confusing at this surface but it needs some understanding to understand how profound those statements were Shil Prabhupada said go back and find out so when this material world entered into when this uh, living entity or the jeev entered into material world or when he falls down to the material world for this reply Srila Prabhupada gives a reply to this question he answers like that go back and find out which is very confusing for me obviously but now it, it is being cleared before it was confusing for me and it can be for most of the people so <coughs> Prabhupada said, focus on going back. Don't try to investigate if a mosquito bites and you get malaria. Which mosquito bit me? Which mosquito bit me because of which? Don't try to do that research. Focus on getting cured. Prabhupada said, for a long time, for a long time, I always felt Prabhupada is just trying to avoid answering this question, right? How many of you felt like that, right? So it looked like that at least for me, I have to be honest, right? And uh, But in the 15th chapter, there is a very interesting discussion, very illuminating discussion between the guru and the disciple. The disciple's name is Vrajnath. The disciple name is Vrajnath and the Guru's name is Raghunath Das Babaji Maharaj. There's a conversation, so I will just take a particular section of that. I'm not going to tell the past story, future story and everything. So Vrajnath asked Raghunath Das Babaji Maharaj, earlier you have explained that the spiritual world as well as the Jeev are eternal. You said that Jeev is living entity or the Jeev is eternal. Spiritual world is eternal. But you are also talking about the Jeev taking birth and creation of the spiritual world and all. That so if they so when you say creation of the Jeev or creation of the spiritual world that they cannot be spiritual there must then they must not have existed before. So why you are speaking like this? Raghunath Das Babaji Maharaj says very illuminating answer. Please hear carefully. Every sentence is a loaded sentence. He says time and space as experienced in the material world is quite different from time and space in the spiritual world. Material time is divided into three sections. Past, present and future, right? So that's, but in the spiritual world, time is ever present without any division. And this is illustrated in a beautiful past time in the spiritual world. Gop Kumar goes to the spiritual world. In the spiritual world, we need to have spiritual qualification for that. Because there is material world may aapko past present future milega but spiritual world may aapko sira present milega wo bhi satogun wala present no wahan par no 
सोचती नो क्रांक्षती मतलब कि नो लेमेंटेशन फॉर द पास और कोई एंगजाइटीज या नई आकांक्षाएं फॉर द फ्यूचर वहाँ ये सब नहीं है बट इसको हम मैं बताने को बता सकता हूँ बट यू कैन नॉट एक्सपीरियंस इज एक्सपीरियंस इट अदरवाइज यू हैव गॉड क्वालिफिकेशन यू हैव टू कैंट हरे कृष्णा हरे रामा मोहम्मद प्रॉपरली सेंटिफाई योर हार्ट क्लेंस द मिरर ऑफ योर हार्ट then you will have more and more realization and uh, until you reach that spiritual platform you will have a self realization that time when you will reach that platform and then you can experience it by yourself so it, it is actually not the right question to be asked that when did the living entity entered this uh, material world so otherwise first we'll have the qualification then we can understand by ourselves that's why prabhupada is saying go back and find out so i will read a little bit more it is becoming very interesting this conversation now so this is illustrated in a beautiful past time in the spiritual world to jab gop kumar spiritual world mein jaate hain gop kumar goes to the spiritual world okay he is in golok vrindavan in <coughs> vrindavan ban and this bhag this episode comes gop kumar is observing the past times there something very interesting he observes past time nitya leela sri krishna bhagwan ke past time he is observing various times are happening reading You know, one day a Krura comes, okay, to take Krishna away to Mathura. I am cutting the long story short, okay. Somehow he manages to convince Nand Maharaj and Yashoda, and after lot of struggle and resistance from the Gopas and Gopis, finally, Vrindavan man a Krura manages to take Krishna and Balram to Mathura. There Krishna goes. kills kamsa kill chanur kill mushtika everyone and pacifies the mauryas mathura vasi sorry and pacifies the mathura vasi and in the meantime mathura vasi are in deep distress they are going to die in separation from krishna they are at the verge of death and krishna get this message so krishna somehow pacify the mother yashoda and uh, vrindavan vasi comes back and he spent such wonderful time with the vasis and the vasis become so absorbed whether the vasis are experience love in the form of union or separation it is so absorbing that they forget the past and the there is no future because the presence is so absorbing right like for example even in the material world there is a faint experience of this then at least for a short time when someone is absorbed in sense gratification forbidden sense gratification let's say coming under the urge of that instant gratification he knows the repercussions are serious and he has experienced it in the past also but when he comes under the intense passion he forgets the past what happened and he forgets the future of what is going to happen in future he becomes so absorbed in the present but that is only for a short time in the material world as soon as that urge subsides there is immediately lamentation because of the thinking of the past and anxiety about the future immediately catches up even through certain very absorbing things in this material world you know bind a person to the present very strongly but it is just a question of time when is past and future will catch up with very with him very quickly but in the spiritual world it is not like that in the spiritual world whether the spiritual <coughs> associate with the supreme lord whether they are experiencing union or separation it is such an absorbing thing it's not that there is no past or future there is no experience of past or future because the present is so absorbing and this is observed by gop kumar as an observer he is observing and gop kumar 
and the mathura vasis is becoming very absorbed they forget about or vrindavan vasis they also are very absorbed they forget about the past forget about the future and gets what what after some time akrura comes again and this same past time repeats he comes and somehow convinces mother yashoda and nand maharaj to take krishna and balram with them and same kind of drama happens the gopis and the gopas they sort of stop but then he manages to take them he goes there kills kansa kills chanura kills mushtika pacifies the mathura vasis in the meantime the vasis are at the verge of death krishna gets the message krishna rushes pacifies the mathura vasis rushes back to vraja and gives them such an experience that in their union they become completely absorbed in the present and guess what akrura comes back again and gop kumar is saying that the same past time you know same few past times are repeating but because of there is no remembrance of the past no anxiety of the future because they are so absorbed in the present so there is no experience of past and future i should tell you that in the spiritual world there is time but there the time never deteriorates it is always in present and that present is also so absorbed in shuddha sat so there is no past or future in spiritual world unless and until we have some qualifications and we got to experience by ourselves by own selves then only we can have an experience otherwise it is very difficult for you to understand but somehow i am explaining in detail but this can be only experience then only we can understand it absolutely perfectly so <clears throat> there is no experience of past and future in the spiritual world that's how all these past times remain ever fresh even though they are repetitions so there is no experience of past similarly you know in the past time of lord narim appearing in the seventh canto when he told kash and he in that ugra you know and the uh, brahma and the demigod they request mother lakshmi please go and pacify him for the when uh, they are talking about when narsimha took the ugra roop when he was in avatar and uh, demigods and brahma they requested mother lakshmi to go and pacify him and she says i have never seen this form of narayan this form nursing avatar form nursing form before i don't even know who it is who is it it is mentioned never seen before what do you mean never seen before in the previous universe where nursing leela happened the same leela happened and now it is happening here after here the next universe wherever it is going to happen is millions of times the same past time has happened but every single time mother lakshmi says i have never seen this form before and she is not faking it really she has never seen that form because of the absorption in the present there is no remembrance of the past that's it <clears throat> it that's it so that expression is with genuine emotions she is genuinely astonished to see that form of narsimha and she genuinely narsim dev narsimha dev form and then she genuinely feels i don't know who this is i have never seen this form before right so therefore he says that in the spiritual world time is ever present without division of past present and future all spiritual activities and happenings of the transcendental realm are perceived in vaman 
where as whatever incidents are normally experienced here are rooted in the notions of mundane time and place so when we discuss spiritual subjects when we are discussing spiritual subjects we say things like later the jeev became entangled with maya so then immediately we will think later means before that later happened the jeev must not have entangled with maya so then the question is why did the jeev get entangled with maya and when did this happen these questions naturally uh, come right these questions naturally arise so when we hear the spiritual world was created which means before being created it must have not existed right like that so our words are being influenced by the concept of material time we cannot actually because we have not experienced spiritual time where only present is there there is no experience of past and future when we actually see so when even in spiritual subject matters are explained we try to understand them based on our understanding of material time only we interpret them within the language of material time and our experience of material time so in all discussions about the jeev and transcendence our thoughts cannot be freed from the concepts of mundane time which automatically enter our deliberations we will naturally think in terms of mundane time only thus inevitably we talk and think in terms of past present and future however he says when you consider the inner meaning of this topic keep in mind that a person who is solely searching for realization of the pure essence of the absolute truth will perceive and apply the concept of eternal ever present time factor in understanding these topics now how are we expected to even supply this very difficult to so he says the guru tells the disciple dear young man you must be extremely cautious while deliberating upon this subject which subject the jiva fall down subject simply absorb yourself in the spiritual concepts and reject the unavoidable mundane draws caused by the words because it's talking about a transcendental subject but material sounding words are used to describe and immediately you will think in terms of material experience within the realm of material time for example he gives an example guess which example he gives that is the verse he says often times the vrindavan vasi speak like this or speak like the krishna bhulia jeev say bhagwan cha kare and then jeev having forgotten this real identity the immediate next question is when did he forget why did he forget the very fact that you are telling forgotten means he must have remembered before these type of questions come okay but the even though the some of the people they speak like this and this way however all they know that the jeev has an eternal nature of which there are two types of one is naisid or nyaisid or nyaimat but the subject is put in this way so that ordinary human intellect can understand something so he says why these things are there what is the meaning of what is the import when he says krishna bhuliya he says what he is trying to communicate is that forgetting krishna is the cause of all in auspiciousness and remembering krishna is the cause of all auspiciousness therefore never put yourself in a situation where you will have to forget krishna that is the message that is being communicated that is where they are trying to shine the light who acharyas are trying to shine the light here but where we look into we look into forgotten when krishna bhuliya jeev 
भूल भूलना you know it says forgot which means remembered before he must have remembered it before then the question is why did he forget when did he forget these questions come okay so he does not understand the actual purpose of why it is spoken in that particular way because it has to be spoken about the inos of forgetting krishna and the auspiciousness of remembering krishna for that purpose like we see the shakha chandra nyay okay a mother is feeding food to the child so she wants to show the child what is moon so she says okay she shows okay look that round white object in between the two branches two branches mean shakha so that is the moon okay what is the purpose because the child cannot comprehend anything beyond that okay so therefore you have to communicate in a way that the child can comprehend according to its age and maturity right so now if the child asks who inserted that moon between the two branches so this kind of question or the mother is feeding that food after some time and she is moving and the child sees that the moon is in between he is able to see the moon in between the windows so then he may ask what is this and the child will uh, ask the mother what is this then mother will say moon but the child may ask what do you mean but you told me that the white object in between the branches is the moon now how did that moon come here the child cannot understand because uh, of its lack of maturity but still the mother has to educate the child according to his level so she says okay you know the child is sorry the moon is in between the branches shakha chandra but the introspective sage perceives the spiritual truth in the quietness of his chit samadhi or devotional meditation that is how one can understand so he says that concerning these topics you see this is a very important point he says concerning these topics there is no room for debating or arguing because applying material logic to spiritual subject matters is a futile exercise that is the problem and then you know what he says i am aware that you cannot immediately comprehend the depth of this argument which means as for a sadhaka or we people cannot understand okay but you know what he says however as your devotional practice and spiritual attachment increases your power to discriminate between matter and spirit will be sharpened so when you actually progress spiritually then your ability to discriminate between matter and spirit will become sharp so therefore he says you must begin the process by sincerely chanting hari naam so you do how do you understand the jeep fall down bhakti vino thakur says sincerely chant hari naam what happens by that thereby your spiritual identity will be manifested gradually and concordant your perception of the spiritual world will take this earnable shape which means unless your heart is purified don't try to understand the subject matter where you are because you are at the stage it is not understandable that's what he says it is like how can you explain a fifth grade student integral calculus or differential calculus if you tell him d by dx by d or dx of sin x is cos x you tell the child he will say that you are taking what are you talking only numbers can be divided or multiplied alphabets cannot be divided that's what he will say because that is so he will try to understand it based on his logic you know you tell 4 multiplied by 2 4 by 2 6 by 3 he will understand 
by dx of sin x he will not understand because that is not according to his level so this is a subject matter whose answer is there but it is comprehensible only at the stage of self realization that's what he is telling okay so therefore he says my advice for you is that you do not approach anyone or ask for a decision upon this philosophy don't go and approach people and tell did the jeep fall down did the jeep fall down did the jeep come to the material world jeep fall down jeep fall down not did jeep fall down not he says so don't ask he says instead bhakti vinod thakur says chant attentively and let your internal purification happen and you progress from anima to nisha to arai to saki to bhakti to prema and then in this way nishtha and then uh, nishtha to anasakti nishtha to ruchi ruchi to anasakti anasakti to bhakti bhakti to prema and in this way you gradually uh, climb up the stairs step by step in the process of bhakti in devotional process so in this way you when you will reach the stage of perfection spiritual perfection then you will be able to understand otherwise if we try to understand it at our current level so we cannot in another essay on in the book uh, bhakti rasamala amrit bhakti rasamala he writes why the jeep turned his face away from krishna he says this can be understood only on the realm of spiritual time again the same argument this cannot be understood on the realm of material time because a sadhaka is only within the realm of material time he cannot understand the subject matter why when no he cannot understand how why when all these things okay so therefore and this is a natural right so therefore in order to resolve doubt sometimes if it is resolvable at our level of spiritual maturity we may hear the answers and understand this is how it happens but sometimes we have to have the maturity to resolve the doubts by understanding that it will be resolved in future that is needed otherwise we will be we will get tormented by those doubts and it will lead to lack of faith losing faith okay so therefore if you see prabhupada's answer of go back and find out it's actually a very scientific answer because unless we are fit enough to go back we cannot find out because at our level this cannot be resolved only and exactly same thing bhakti vinod thakur is also explaining here okay i will just end this with one thing which i am not supposed to do so ye ek prabhu ji ne ek maine dekha tha unhone bola tha the i am not supposed to do to unhone end mein bola ki isko sabko main end karta hu unhone wo bata rahe the bahut acha explain kar rahe the unhone kaha ki main hindi song ke sath isko end karta hu but wo kehte hain ki i am not supposed to do this भी बोल रहे थे कि फिर भी मैंने अपने उन्होंने अपने जो है शिक्षा गुरु से और दीक्षा गुरु से उन्होंने वो ली थी इजाजत तो वो ऐसा बोल रहे थे तो मैंने वो लिखा हुआ है एक्चुअल में वो उनका गीत भी लिखा है तो वो कह रहे थे कि इन दी एंड ही वॉज जस्ट सेइंग दैट these all things have explained in summarized in one particular song in a hindi movie of course it was not written for that purpose it was written for some totally mundane purpose and i don't wish to sing it ye aisa prabhu ji bol rahe the so says this is a holy seat kyunki prabhu ji vyas asan pe baithe hain holy seat par to wo keh rahe the main nahi ga sakta but keh rahe hain ki by sitting we should not तो कह रहे थे कि सिटिंग हियर व्हाट टू स्पीक ऑफ टॉकिंग अबाउट मंडेन थिंग्स बट आई अपॉलोजाइज 
to the devotees for doing this but there is beautiful not beautiful actually but the words are very much reflecting you know what we have discussed in the conclusion if you have to understand this whole thing okay to unhone bola ki nahi ab prabhu ji mujhe bol rahe hain he has given me permission to unhone kaha ki main thoda ga ke suna deta hu to main aapko thoda batata hu wo is geet ke bare mein batate the ये बहुत अच्छा लगा था आपको भी बहुत अच्छा लगेगा तो कहते हैं कि हैव हर्ड लॉन्ग ओल्ड सॉन्ग यू मस्ट हैव हर्ड दिस ओल्ड सॉन्ग उसमें बताते हैं ये क्या हुआ कब हुआ कैसे हुआ ये ना पूछो जब हुआ जैसे हुआ ये ना पूछो तो ये गीत है तो इसमें ये बता रहे हैं भी ये क्या कब हुआ वेन डिड इट हैपन कैसे हुआ वाई इट हैपन और जब हुआ जैसे हुआ भाई जैसे होना था हो गया इट हैपन वेन इट हैड टू हैपन तो ये मत सोचो तो डोंट थिंक अबाउट इट व्हेन कब जीव भौतिक जगत में आके गिरा व्हेन द जीव फेल इनटू द मटेरियल वर्ल्ड सो एक्चुअली वो बताते हैं ये गीत भी एक फिल्म का है मूवी नेम इज आल्सो अमर प्रेम एंड व्हेन वी एक्चुअली लीव लीव दिस बॉडी देन एंड व्हेन वी हैव रीच दैट स्टेज व्हेन आर प्यार अमर प्यार बिकम्स अमर और लव बिकम्स एटरनल अमर प्रेम एटरनल लव को उस मूवी का नाम भी यही है तो वो कह रहे हैं कि वी जो है जीप फॉल डाउन व्हाट ही हैज मेंशन व्हेन डिड दिस हैपन एक्चुअली व्हाई डिड दिस हैपन सो देन ही सेज यू नो व्हेन इट हैड टू हैपन इट हैपन बट व्हाट ही सेज सो व्हाट वी हैव टू थिंक अबाउट थिंक अबाउट योर chanting the maha mantra properly hari krishna maha mantra properly get purified internally and when we become qualified to understand we will understand so interestingly the name of the movie in which this song comes actually answers this question also the name of the that movie is amar prem so when we actually leave uh, leave the body and we have perfected our devotional service we have reached on that stage where our pr becomes amar or love becomes internal actually then we can understand everything all answers will be resolved only when we reach that stage of eternal love for krishna hari krishna hari krishna 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 hari 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 ram hari ram 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 hari hari thank you very much hari krishna